Hi everyone, welcome back to the Temple Street Children's University Hospital um, High Performance Reflections. This week's guest is Breed Cork Corkery, who's the youth coordinator uh, with Bank of Ireland. Recognised for her achievements and contributions to sp Cork, Camogie and ladies football, Breed is considered one of the most successful athletes in Irish sport. Representing her county in both Camogie and ladies football, Breed has accumulated an incredible 18 All Ireland medals. Winning, winning seven All Ireland Camogie Senior Championships between 2005 to 2018, and another 11 All Ireland Senior Football titles in the same period. Along with the collective successes achieved with Cork Camogie and Ladies Football, Breed was also recognised for her individual performance no fewer than 16 times as she collected each of her six Camogie and 10 Ladies Football All Stars. In 2005, Breach was named as the National Female Sports Person of the Year and became only the sixth Camogie player in history to receive the Texaco Player of the Year Award in 2008. In 2015, Breach was named alongside teammate and joint top All-Ireland holder Rena Buckley as the Irish Times Sports Ireland Sportswoman of the Year. Breach's on-field successes extend beyond her inter-county career. At club level, Breach has added to her list of accomplishments, winning three club senior championships, as well as a minor, intermediate and senior Munster and All-Ireland title. Although no longer representing her county at inter-county level, Breach's love and support for her community remains in a professional capacity as youth coordinator with the Bank of Ireland, while also continuing to line out for her home clubs, Claude Dove and St. Val's. So with that, I'm glad to introduce you all to Breach Corkery. Breach, how are you? Good, Peter, how are you? Not too bad. You can hear me all right, can you? Yeah, yeah not too bad. Great. Um, so thanks a million. Thanks a million for coming on board today. I know uh, your, your time is precious and you're busy. So um, thanks a million for, for coming on and supporting us today. No matter. Uh, does Grant have a little bit of time out tonight? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, what we might do, Breach, is we might uh, drop, we might, just jump into a few questions if that's all right with you yeah that's perfect yeah great so the first one i have for you um is a nice one to kick off and that is what does high performance look like for you bridge in terms of um maybe your sporting career or, or whatever wherever you want to go with that um i suppose high performance is i suppose just giving us everything um and realizing along the way where where you haven't you know i suppose realizing along the way where you haven't actually I suppose where you, your downfall is, and I suppose that's the biggest thing about high performance is you have to realise when you're not going well and when you are going well. Um, and I think that's probably why most, I suppose, uh, high performance athletes uh, do well because they, they're good to look back at themselves and realise, okay, I need to pick it up here or I'm not going so well here. And, they, you know, they admit to, to being wrong and that's, that's what makes them stand out a small bit, I suppose. Okay. Very good. Um, and in terms of, I suppose, you know, you were, you were part of two incredible successful organizations with the, with the Camogie and ladies football with Cork. Um, and it was, it was obviously a very, it was a long-term success in terms of the amount of titles and how long you stayed at the top. What were, what were kind of some of the most obvious points of high performance for you in there or how, how, how was it maintained for so long? Um, I suppose the most important thing for us was keeping our heads on our feet on the ground and keeping our our heads our heads on the ground as well, you know, um, and never getting ab too above ourselves. Um, and again, I think just going back to looking where things were went wrong, girls were willing to take the responsibility of, you know, that things didn't go right for us. We need to look back at what what we need to improve on. Um, I suppose having a good relationship with everyone, management, the whole lot, um, that was definitely a big factor of, you know, you know, the, the winnings through the years. And, you know, I suppose the biggest thing is having respect for each other as, as a group. Um, you know, we might not all be best friends. We might, you know, we might be friendly at all, but it was about getting the ball to the person in the right position. Um, and I suppose that's another trait that you just have to respect everyone on the pitch. Um, it, it shouldn't be about who they are or things like that, it should be about, you know, um, exactly who the player is beside you and who's in the best position. Okay. And I suppose, I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, uh, some of our guests that we've, we've spoken to, and, you know, uh, there's a reoccurring team there around high performance and maybe that 
it's mistaken for elitism and professionalism and, um, and, and maybe mistakenly it's seen as always kind of winning and always achieving. In terms of your kind of circle, in terms of the Camogie or ladies football or both, was, was there a definition around high performance? Was there, you know, was winning brought in as a requirement or how did you mark your, your own successes? Um, I think in, in both the ladies football and the Camogie, um, I think you know it was it was definitely about giving it a hundred percent. If if you gave it everything you possibly could, um, then you can come off the pitch and say, right, okay, I, you know, we won for a reason or we lost for a reason, um, and I think any time we, you know, like it was, if you gave a hundred percent, you can walk away and say, I did, I did everything I possibly could do. And I think as a group, you you have to you have to do that. And I think that was one thing that Eamon always said was, give it a hundred percent, walk off the pitch with no regrets. And it's I suppose it's something that we all took at a very young age, starting off that we we took it on board. And you know, obviously there was days things didn't go right for us, and um, you know that you can come back and say, right, did these are my mistakes. These are what I, you know, this is, I'm only at 95% here because of this. Um, you know, so they were the things. And again, it, come, it came, came down to the responsibility of being a high, like, you know, giving it, giving it everything and um, letting no stones unturned. And I suppose when you lose a game, you always, you always know why you did. Um, and I think when you win it, you, you kind of know, you know, you know how he won it as well, you know. So that's that's the biggest thing. It's it's about just giving it everything, and even whether it's training, whether it's a practice game, a uh, championship or a league game, we I suppose the main thing is to win, um, and that that sets your standards to you know re- reach high performance and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Very interesting. Um, and I suppose that probably moves us then nicely on to um, our next question. And we've we've probably touched on a little bit of it already. But in terms of the factors kind of that, that make up a high performance environment, is there anything in particular that stands out for you that was consistent maybe in, in, in your behaviors or the way you, the way you interact with each other or kind of what, what, what factors do you believe were critical to, to your successes? Yeah, um, I think honesty is probably the biggest thing. Um, and I think if you respect and honesty, and that goes within a work environment and it goes within other things. If you respect and have are honest with your colleagues, with your teammates, then it makes things a lot more smoother, you know. Um, and when, once you're willing to help out at, at every stage and you're willing to give it 100%, that's, that's kind of what, what high performance is all about and getting the best out of it. And I think when that happens, you get the best out of each other as well. Um, so I think, you know, that was the one thing we all, as I said earlier, you know, you have to have tr- trust each other, respect each other and giving it your honest, honesty is probably a huge thing as well for, for a team to work well. And, you know, we, we all make mistakes throughout the year. Um, you know, we all let our, our standards dip a little bit. That's, that's just, you know, that's just life. Um, but I think the biggest thing is to realise it. Um, and realise that, okay, I, you know, I slacked off a training here a small bit, um, different things, you know, different things like that. Um, You know, did you, did you not prepare properly for the game? Different things like that. So I think that's the biggest thing really is just, you know, having respect for each other um, and having trust with each other. And I think, you know, again, looking back on, you know, setting your own standard and see has it dropped and I think probably every athlete, you know, when they play bad, have realised, you know, that okay, I didn't, I didn't set my standards as high as I should have, and like I would be the first to admit it at times I've, I've let myself slip. But, um, you know, I suppose to take it on the chin, then maybe when management come to you and say, look, you need to up the ante, or, you know, you're falling behind. You, know, you have to take it on the chin. It's not an insult. They're just trying to get the best out of you. Mm-hmm. And that's the best thing about, I suppose, team performance, um, a team sport, is you, you have the people around you to tell you, look, come on, buckle up a small bit. Um, I suppose I remember in 2006, um, coming off after winning the double uh, the year before, um, I suppose I put on a, a nice bit of weight. I was enjoying myself and I had to, I was kind of half pull, 
I suppose Eamon and the boys dropped me off the the, fo the football team um, and I was only coming on as a sub and I just had to realise, okay, I need to cop on here. I need to shed the weight. I need to get fit and I need to, to cop on. And you just have to realise these things if you want to get far. Um, we could, I could have gone the other route and gone sulking and blamed everyone else. But sometimes it's, it's, about, it's a bit about personal responsibility as well, you know. Yeah, and it sounds like um, it sounds like he had that kind of accountability in there as well among players and management. It's something that Rena touched on as well in you know when I when I was chatting with her in terms of there seemed to be a, a great bond, but also accountability between you as a playing group. Yeah, um, yeah, the football and Camogie, you know, we were very lucky with the players that we we grew up with and played with all through the years. I think. More, um, all players were just willing to to sacrifice, um, sacrifice like loads of different things, and just like every every other inter county player, even some club players, you know, they sacrifice their whole life, their whole life for to to win and to perform well and stuff like that. So, um, we definitely had that as a group, but I think it was instilled by all the trainers we had as well from a very young age, and um, the likes of you know, I suppose when I started out, uh, Fiona Driscoll and Eamon were. were you know, was you know at the start of my career training us, and they instilled a lot of that in us. That it was, it was down to each other. It was down to personal responsibility and um, and it respect again, like you know. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I suppose in terms of the longevity, then um, I'm 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 very curious to 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 know. I suppose it's it's all good having the honesty and the um, you know the the accountability there as well. Um, but how in God's name did you keep yourself motivated for that long? Um, look, I suppose it's probably a lot easier to come back after winning. Um, you know, you, you're keeping the momentum up. I think, uh, I suppose I can speak for all the girls, but I suppose for myself, once the year was over, the year was over. Um, you know, you had a fantastic year if you won, if you didn't, if you didn't win, um, you'd look back and say, "Right, okay, we made a disaster of that. We need to, we need to fix that." And uh, you know, I just think it's probably a competitive edge in, in in girls as well that, you know, that they wanted to keep winning. And I think once the Ireland was over, we'd celebrate till till Christmas, and um, then it was just a matter of right back out and training. That year's gone. Forget about it. Um, I remember in 2006, the year after we won the first uh, football I learned, we came back to training and Eamon said, it's easy to win one, um, back to back is impossible. And he was like, he, uh, he was like, the only way you can do it is small heads and small arses. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it was it was a good line for us, um, you know, and at the time we kind of laughed it off, but it makes it makes so much sense, you know, uh, keeping fit and keeping your, keeping your head keeping your head on the ground is probably you know it's it's just it's about it's it's some, it was nothing there's no psychology to it or anything it was just plain and simple words and I think all the girls took it on board and it, it was probably one of the best advice we'd have got uh, starting out and he always just said forget about last year you can't that's done it's time to move on and I suppose again I, we're all competitive as a group and we just wanted to, to do well while we were there and I suppose the other side of it then is just about in enjoying it. Like once you're enjoying something, um, you know, it's going to make it a lot easier, a lot easier to play and a lot easier to perform as well. So I think the girls just love playing football and camogie and that's why they came back year after year and gave it everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I suppose I'm curious to know in terms of kind of the high performance, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of teams talk about maybe the why in terms of why why people are doing what they're doing and um you know maybe that sometimes that has a huge impact on the team um, and i know cork are a very proud county and have very proud sports teams there but was that something you ever talked about in your time was it was it was it was there anything there in terms of why you, why you were where you were or was it just as simple as going out and doing the best you can do um i think it was simple as just None of us were doing it for the glory of being on the media um, to be known as a sports person. I think we just did it for the love of the game. Um, and we did it as a group. Um, you know, I, I just think, um, I remember one time we were, uh, I think it was TG Kahar asked us, would, 
could they follow us around in the dressing room um, and for, for the year and as a group we decided no um, and I think a lot of that was because we just all we wanted to do was perform and get football over and done with and, and you know tr do the best we could do that year and thankfully we went on and we went to win it that year as well no, I suppose it would have been nice to have that memory of, you know, them following us around and looking at our training sessions and stuff like that. But for us at the time, it was all about, you know, just getting the job done, training, enjoying training and having no distractions. Very good. Yeah. And look, I suppose every everybody's unique. And I think um, it's it's certainly um, understandable, um, that, that approach. And it's great to hear. Um, so that brings us nicely then on to our um, next one, Breeze, if you don't mind. Um, yep. So that is, how important has reflection been for you throughout your career? Um, like for me, I reflect, I, I'd reflect on back in the match, um, matches and just figure out what I could have done, what I, what I did wrong. Some people like to reflect on the positives and stuff like that. For me, I suppose I'm my biggest critic. Um, and I think probably that was probably something that kept me going most of the time. Um, I suppose as a footballer, I was a, a far more confident footballer than I was hurler. Um, so I, I suppose, you know, for me, I like to critique myself. Um, and I, I'd like, I used to like feedback. I used to like people tell me what I did or did not do. Um, I used to like being told what to do, do on the pitch. Um, you know, I, I'd have never had any issue of people telling me what to do on the pitch. Um, and But I suppose in Camogie, I, I always felt like I needed... Um, a little bit more um, compliments when it came to Camogie. I felt I needed a little bit more of a G up, if that makes sense. Um, so I suppose that was the biggest thing, you know, um, for me, I just needed, football wise, I just needed to look back at myself and know where I went wrong and no problem being told. Um, again, in the Camogie, no problem being told where I went wrong, but I think I definitely needed a lot more um, confidence booster for Camogie, you know. Um, and again, that just comes down to being confident and, um, you know, just knowing your own ability and different things like that. And I suppose I knew myself I wasn't a great hurler, um, but I knew I could get around it by doing as much work rate as possible and just try and do the right thing. Um, so it's it's kind of strange, really. I suppose um, reflecting on the two of them, uh, it was kind of quite, quite different every time. Um, but I suppose definitely reflecting on football, I'd always look at my negatives um, and see, you know, what or what mistakes I made, how I could have improved it. But in Komogi, I'd be just trying to concentrate on the positives um, and just say, look, you did this well, uh, you did this well, and whatever, and just look for feedback, I suppose, from the management and. Um, just try and get my confidence up. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. I suppose it probably allowed you. It probably allowed you to um, control. You know, in terms of maybe whatever, what is a little bit of stress or anxiety or whatever was there around the camogie that you know, looking at the positives surely surely helped you in in the long term. Yeah, I think so. Like, I think it just you, you just have to look at things very differently and. And in different ways and that goes for every walk of life you know um when it comes to work when it comes to you know you think as a footballer and a co player you'd you'd look at the things the same way but you don't you have to look at things differently and um how you you know you know everyone's so different at different things they bring out a different i suppose you've talented people you've the the people who are the work rate and you've a bit of both so um you know you just have to figure out for yourself what where where you're going wrong and what what what's what you need to do to suit your your ability, you know. Very good. And did you find the reflection have any any impact on you psychologically, good or bad, or or was that something that you ever thought about? Um, I think you know. I think as I got older, um, and as I was coming closer to the end of you know, I, at the end of my career, um, I think I just maybe um you know, worry about things too much. Um, I just kind of like overthink things. And I think that's when the enjoyment started to go go out of it, go out of it for me. Um, I started to look back on the papers and see was I mentioned. And if I wasn't mentioned, I was like, geez, I, I thought I didn't do too bad. I probably should have got some mention, surely. And then I was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I why am I looking back on papers? Who who gives a damn what they're saying? Um, it doesn't really matter if, you know, how if you get mentioned in the paper or not, or, you know, it doesn't matter if, 
if you played poor but you still won, the main thing is that the team won. Now you need to look back on uh, where you played poor or if you played well and the team the team won, then, you know, that doesn't matter. It's it's a team environment and, you know, I suppose towards the end I definitely reflected um, in the wrong in the wrong kind of way um but i think a lot of that was fear in the fact that this is my last year and stuff like that and you know i suppose i went on for a couple of years but <laughs> um so yeah just little things like that where you just reflect you you reflect maybe negative too negatively um and i suppose again it just came down to just making sure that you enjoy yourself when you're when, whatever you're playing or whatever you're doing you won't perform unless you enjoy it properly um and just things like that. And I even found last year with the Camogie, um, you know, I just, there was a lot going on outside of, outside of the pitch and it was, I became injured and during you know, last year, I suppose it, I didn't really, I enjoyed it, but I didn't. Um, and I suppose it, it reflected maybe on the pitch where I was nervous coming up to the ball all the time and stuff like that. So I think a lot reflecting and looking back, it, it's all about, you have to enjoy it. Um, same inside and work here I wasn't work wasn't going well for me and then I stopped enjoying it and just things things weren't going right at all for me so you know sport and work and everyday life all comes down to the same thing and um, if you're happy doing something you'll enjoy it and you'll perform or you'll work well or you know things will go okay for you um, and you're happy to get up out of bed in the morning to to go to work or whatever um, but I think the moment you stop enjoying things um is the moment it'll, it'll become very hard for you and that's where you reflect neg negatively as well and you know it, it's i it's the same for sports it's the same for you know relationships different things like that so it's it's um enjoying everything i think is the most important thing and doing what you, what you what makes you happy is probably the most important thing yeah absolutely well said i think um you know there's there's so much value in there for our listeners in terms of the reflection piece both professionally you know personally and 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 sport sports wise i think um you know we, we can maybe focus on on the negative side of reflection too much and that obviously has a massive impact on us so um great insight and, and thanks for that um so the next question i have then lined up for you bridge um in terms of resources so again you know feel free to go whatever way you want with this in terms of your sports your sports career or, or your business but is there any resources that you could recommend to our listeners that ha has helped you you know in terms of learning um and development um i suppose the biggest thing is and i i i'm slow on the uptake myself in a lot of things um i think you have to be open-minded and um, be willing to change your ways um you know, I'd be very, I suppose before I'd have been very much like, um, you know, just, I suppose when it came to like sports psychologists and stuff like that, um, you know, that, oh my God, like what are people going to them for? Just go away and play. But I think as I got older, then I realized, okay, uh, you just need someone to, to boost your confidence. And I suppose, you know, it's good. To, I, I got more into those kind of things as I, um, you know, as, as I suppose as I got older through my career and stuff like that, and you know, it's just about being more open-minded and um, try different things. Um, I remember um, we were doing a lot of Pilates, and I was like, "What is this like? Why are we doing Pilates?" Um, but then, like you know, after a while, you do see the the good in them, you know. And I think that would be my biggest fault at times is I I, I don't be open-minded enough to to change and stuff like that. And I think that's something when you're going into, especially the team environment, to be a bit more open-minded about things. Um, yeah, I think that's probably one, one of the biggest things that I'd be thinking of. Okay. And uh, there's, a, there's, there's certainly a, a hot and cold answer to this question, I guess, <laughs> but uh, are you a reader or are you a subscriber to podcasts or videos or anything like that? Oh, I'm definitely a sub subscriber. Um, I, I suppose the only time I ever read, read would be when I'm on holidays. Um, and I suppose that doesn't happen very often, so um, it probably won't happen at all now for another couple of years. But yeah, so I definitely li try to listen to podcasts. Um, I enjoy listening to, I suppose, people talking about their their career and talking about their, you know, just I like listening to people um, and having the chats about things rather than, I suppose, even more than podcasts. I suppose, really, you know. Um, 
uh, just personally talking to them, I like to get an insight into someone how they're how they're doing and different things like that. So, yeah, just I think you can have a really honest chat with someone, and um, it's nice to nice to have that. Very good. Um, and the last one I'm going to stick you to is um, in terms of role models and stuff growing up, um, you know, as a young camogie and ladies footballer, uh, did role models play any part for you growing up? Um, I suppose look, the two biggest people that I always remember when I was growing up would be Roy Keane um, and Dermot O'Sullivan. Um, I suppose car curlers were doing very, very well at the time, winning our learns. And just, I suppose, when I was around... 12, 13, you know, so it was a, a good year to to be think, you know, to, to see them winning, you know. Um, I remember winning an All Ireland out in my back garden the same day as the hurlers uh, beat Kilkenny in, two, in 99. Um, I think I got player to match that day as well, I think, <laughs> in my own back garden. But I think they kind of spurred me on, I suppose, to be playing, playing away. Um, but I think, you know, I suppose the biggest role models really would have been, uh, I suppose, my parents, um, my primary school teacher, Ger Coakley. He was he was great to get us involved, and he gave everyone a chance. Um, no, I suppose he, we got a chance because there was we'd only eight players and up for a team of seven in the Camogie, but <laughs> it was great to to get the chance anyway. Um, but yeah, they, I suppose they're my role models growing up. Um, I never had any, it's kind of funny, I never had any aspirations to play for Cork. Um, and I know that sounds strange, but I think it was literally just the joy of playing football and camogie for me was probably the biggest thing. Um, I remember getting trials and um, they were naming the last 30 for the panel. And um, Char Charlie McLaughlin, he was the trainer at the time, he was picking the panel and he put his hand on my head and he was like some people won't make it but that's all right you'll be back again next year um and i remember going home going oh i definitely not after making it now and thankfully i got the phone call and i think that was probably another moment where i realized you know this is this is something you can you know if you put your, the hard work in you can you can really get the results from us so there's just been little things when i was younger that that touched you know that opened my eyes a small bit for it you know yeah Absolutely, and it sounds like it sounds like you were maybe shaped is the wrong word, but there there seems to be a lot of influence there for you from people rather than resources. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it was just people and encouragement. I think from you know, and I suppose I come from a family of um, there's a family of ten of us, ten kids. Um, there was some shocking games of hurling and football out in the garden where the fights just be just be a bit bit mad um, and I think that probably brought out the competitive side of me as well um, I'd have been the the ninth out of the ten so um, I'd be pucked around the place nicely alright but um, <laughs> it was I suppose that was the competitive side then that came out that you know I had to fend for myself and um, you know that was that, that was a good starting point as well so I suppose my family the, all my brothers and sisters were they, they gave me they gave me they gave me something anyway Great, great. I think uh, I think a lot of us can relate to the, the difference uh, a good a good game of of garden hurling or football has made for us all growing up. So definitely yeah. great that, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners will as well. Um, so the final question I have for you, Breege, and that is throughout your career, um, what's the most what's the most important thing you have learned to date? Um. Yeah, I suppose uh, I I think I answered the second last question wrong there. I um I suppose being open minded, um, learning to trust each other, um, and you know just willing to take you know willing to realize when you know you need to set your standards higher, um, and when you've let your standards drop, you know, um, I think they're the biggest thing. And I suppose most of all, it's it's all about enjoying it. Um, you have to enjoy everything you're doing uh, to make it work properly, and I think that has been the, you know, I suppose later on in my career, I real I started to realise that the most, um, that you know, because I wasn't enjoying it as much as I could, because I, you know, you're getting older, uh, training is becoming harder, um, I suppose it became more um, professional, you know, there was the gym side of things, and there was training more often, and, um. You know, it it just I suppose, and then there was the work work working. You know, I was farming at the time, and 
it just made things a lot harder. Um, and I suppose I just didn't enjoy it in the last couple of years. And, you know, that's where I started to get a little bit more cranky. I started to reflect poorly on myself. So I think the biggest thing about everything you do is enjoyment. Um, and I think, you know, learning to trust people, learning to, you know, be open minded is, is probably the, the biggest thing as well for to be, to, you know, as what I learned as going through my career. Yeah, I, I can't think of a much better way to, to end a, a session on, you know, enjoyment and, and open mindedness. I think it's a, it's a powerful thing and it's certainly something we're all guilty of not doing in terms of that enjoyment piece. Um, definitely. So. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up on that bridge um, by thanking you sincerely for coming on board. Um, we really appreciate you coming on board and support what we're doing. But also on behalf of our listeners, I want to thank you as well because I know um, they'll get great value in listening to yourself um, and the insights they've got for over the last half an hour. So thanks very much for for coming on today. No matter. Thanks, Peter. Cheers. Thanks, Breed. So that's it for another session of uh, High Performance Reflections. I hope everyone um, enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, like always, uh, to access the videos, you can access them free of charge on our YouTube channel. Just search High Performance Reflections. And that will bring you to our channel. Um, and also, if you'd like to donate to our very worthy cause of Temple Street Children's University Hospital, you can do that through our GoFundMe page at GoFundMe. Um, you can search, again, High Performance Reflections, or you can get the link directly at, on the GoFundMe page or the YouTube channel. So for now, all that's left to say is goodbye. I hope you enjoyed our session, and I'm looking forward to our next session. Take care, everyone.